Oh my god. Oh my god! I don't know who did this, but like, good job. The world can now see Duke Nukem Forever 2001 in all its totally unfinished glory. Because it was leaked. It's been more than 20 years. Longer than Duke Nukem Forever was actually in development. And now, we finally get to see all the levels that were designed specifically to be included in the 2001 trailer. I'm kidding. But I'm really not. A lot of them were just that. I know it took a while to get this video out, but let's just say I was busy doing other things. Send overnight, ensure package delivered with care. Thank you. Don't fucking wink at me. What are you, a 12-year-old girl? Am I not paying for professional mercs? Am I paying for Sabrina and her friend Melody? Spelled Melody? Don't you ever fucking emoji wink at me again, you despicable f A lot of you are probably asking, after 21 years, what is the UI like? Well, I found it interesting because the menu is this thing called SOS, Shades Operating System. As if they're directly inside Duke's sunglasses, so he had a reason to wear those. It's a nice bit of world building, and you can customize the desktop background with a bunch of presets that are in this build. Some of which aren't mostly naked women. And one of which is, uh, teen nudity? Can't show that. That's pussy, pussy, pussy. All of this is already cooler than what we actually got. If this was DNF 2011, the Shades operating system would be like the vagina wetting ocular undressing system, because I think the longer the game was in development, the more sexually frustrated the team became. What I love about this build is that you can use the level select to just go to any level that's here. Starting with Duke's Casino, the Lady Killer. It seems like the general story beats of Duke Nukem Forever didn't change that much, just the way it plays. I want to mention this now because I think we give Randy Pitchford a hard time. I love a good joke. I mean... For fuck's sake, I own the Duke Nukem franchise. Not that he doesn't always deserve it. The man's so greasy, they have a prize for catching him at the Amarillo Fair. What I'm saying is that Randy just resurrected a version of DNF that 3D Realms was already making. A terrible version, and I would point fingers at who's to blame, but I'll be damned if I'm bringing bird sight drama into this. My audience deserves better, I'm told. So let's boot up the Lady Killer and we'll- Oh God! Nice fucking mo- at least there's a jump animation, and it doesn't start with pissing. The piss button, yes, a piss button. Possibly even predating the Postal 2 piss button. Though the effects aren't as impressive. There's a lot of interactivity and fun stuff around here. It's very Deus Ex, very early 2000s Unreal Engine, though it's still pretty impressive considering. Look at Jimmy here, the page. We can see a little of his dialogue at the top left of the screen. Who's next? Cool. A lot of this section is actually kind of sort of playable. After La Vista, asshole. Most of the active enemies in these levels are these EDF soldiers that have been taken over by aliens and they have cool tentacles that come out of them and sometimes their eyes pop out when you shoot them and the gore effects are really, really cool. And I'm not sure how any of this would have worked on a PC from 2001, but it is damn impressive for the time. We've got some interesting scripted events and set pieces inside, like going through Duke's penthouse. A lot of this stuff exists in the final version, but is more wanky and gross. This whole section is hampered by a failure of what I assume to be modern graphics drivers interpreting whatever this shit used to be with the fog and the rain effects making the rooftops unplayable for me. Okay, so I'm kind of a dumbass sometimes, and when I was installing the patches that came with this, I thought, yeah, why not use the August renderer to get better hair effects? Even if it will break various other features. Those features being a lot of things. Decals, transparency, particle effects, the heads-up display, weather effects. And then I finished the entire video, and because I've been avoiding other content talking about the leak while I'm making my own content talking about the leak, everybody else skipped the nice hair and their game looks better, so I go back, retake a bunch of footage, and everyone has a good laugh, but hey, in this video, every now and then, you'll get to see slightly less horrifying strippers. You're welcome. I am dead inside. You're one of them, aren't you? Stay away or I'll blast you.
My kung fu's the best. Remember in DNF 2011 when there was literally no tension because you were walking around and nothing was fucking happening and you didn't actually shoot at an alien for a while? And the first ones you saw you had to throw trophies at? Yeah, here it looks like two things are happening. One, the aliens are actually trying to kill you. And two, they were really trying with these effects and set pieces. This glass shattering effect, these falling curtains in 2001, but this is still a jank ass build so here's Dead Eye Duke admiring himself in the mirror. <laughs> Duke's looking good. Check me out in the mirror. I'm hot. Look at my ass. You want to touch it, don't you? There are sections that you can play right through with level transitions and all. Here we're in this maintenance area being attacked by alien-controlled humans. And while I'm going to talk about the absolutely stupid number of functional weapons that exist in this build in its own chapter a bit later, Duke's Golden Eagle warms my fucking heart, and it's a crime that it got turned into a pea-shooting 1911 in the real game. Oh, 9mm? Not an eagle, obviously. But is this a Desert Eagle either? Because it says it fires fucking 50 cals. There's an eagle. Point five up. Damn, that's overkill. But also, that's Duke. And I love the reload animation. It has such attitude, such interesting little details, and a perfect little sound effect. It feels like I'm playing an action game and not a generic military shooter clone, like something with personality. Duke doesn't have personality just because he can give an alien spaceship the middle finger. Little moments are as important as big moments. I never expected to see rope climbing, and I certainly never expected to see rope climbing and swinging that seems to work perfectly. This takes me to a secret, my god, a secret, where I get some money, which yes, you can spend money and loot it from corpses. Corpse looting in a Duke Nukem game. It isn't that far-fetched when you remember that even though Duke 3D was primitive, they were attempting to make something more realistic than shooters had been before. All the interactivity, like they maybe wanted to, you know what, fuck it, Duke Nukem Forever 2001 is an immersive sim, and it got killed by the M-Sim curse. So did Petty Thief, but I'm thinking of bringing it back. We get to visit the museum bit that we saw in the final game, except this time Duke kicks ass in it. Who's more with that game from? And what's this, an interactive keypad? The kind I wouldn't see in an FPS until, like, Doom 3 did it a few years later? Look how beautiful these 3D versions of the old aliens are. Especially this pit cop. Hey, baby. You ever snowball the pinnacle of online entertainment? Duke is the man of the millennium. His face is on Mount Rushmore. You know, all this self-aggrandizing crap works better when Duke has been kicking ass for a little while instead of spending the first section of the game being metaphorically and literally filleted. Duke's office is cool, too. Looks like he's got the kill -a -ton collection with all the add-ons, and even Time to Kill, which to my knowledge never came out in a big box like that since it was on the PlayStation. So in 2001, three years before Doom 3, we're interacting with this computer composing an email. Who should we send it to? Oh, yeah, of course. Hi, Randy. Got a hold of that 2001 build of DNF. Was wondering if you had seen this before and if you're responsible for the weird naked teenage girls that I can set the SOS background to. Sincerely, Civvy11. P.S. Don't you go up to that old Micmac burial ground, Randy. Don't you do it. That place takes hold of you. Sometimes. Dead is better. But no, you have to read your email to get a passcode to get into the Duke Cave. Oh yeah, and the service is called Finger Me, that makes sense. Nah, I don't really want to answer it. I'm more interested in, I don't know, what Duke's AI lady friend is called. But I'm gonna guess... Maxi Moorhead. General Graves here. I've got good news, Duke. Sam, it's been ages. How you been? You won't need to blunder around in the dark anymore. Our engineers have developed a night vision upgrade for your shades, and we are uploading it to you right now. Let us know what you think. Graves out. This is a lie because he doesn't upload it. It doesn't end up in my inventory, and even if it did, as I found out later when I cheated to get it, it's all fucked up and practically useless. Until I take off the August render patch. Why was that even included? I'm not sure the hair was that important. I've got a nice punchy shotgun now, and I'm in a burning hotel actually saving people. Not this guy, though. Not him. 
I'm a little angry that this game never came to fruition, reportedly, because didn't like that the engine didn't have stencil shadows like Doom 3, and, uh... Hey. Hey. Neither did Half-Life 2, and people love that game. PC Gamer said it was the best game of all time. It didn't matter. The fact that they scrapped this primitive but promising game that had so much more going for it than the fucking... Oh, it burns a little. It's like, imagine you got married and you hate your wife because you're a boomer and society told you that you should marry someone you hated so that you can have kids that you hate, and then everyone can be miserable because that's what life is, misery and disappointment. So you marry this person that you fucking hate and the relationship festers for like a decade and then one day by chance you meet a girl you really liked in college who was smarter and funnier and honestly more attractive and she's doing great. And she asks how you're doing and you tell her everything, you just pour your heart out total, complete honesty, and she pepper sprays you. All that bullshit I just said, that's how I feel. Getting to the outside of the casino is where I think I can pinpoint exactly what was lost. See, the outside parts of Vegas and DNF 2011, they were all this gross brown daylight bullshit, you know, because that's how you think of Vegas, right? No, no one thinks of Vegas like that. It's a city of sin, it's lit up like a Christmas tree at night. The ambience you're looking for, maybe one similar to what you saw in Duke Nukem 3D where like all of the city levels took place at night, right? Let me go back and check, yeah, like all of them. Even the one that was in a family theme park. And you can say, hey, maybe this tone was influenced by some of those 80s movies that Duke himself was influenced by, like The Terminator, and many John Carpenter films, such as Escape from New York, lest they live because that was heavily a daytime movie, but still, if you look at that kind of stuff and you see that darker, grittier, urban tone that everyone was going for, that's the vibe, that's the mood. That's the one that fits Las Vegas, and they knew that, which is why this whole build has Vegas at night and why they obviously tried that shit first. Duke Nukem inhabits a world that I would call seedy. It's a little greasy, right? It's a land of strip clubs, adult bookstores, porno theaters, where this buff cartoon man who is, let's face it, lecherous, a bit of a man whore, likes to indulge himself in this world, but also will fight tooth and nail to protect it from an alien race that is objectively worse. They stole our chicks, it's simple and occasionally childish, but it's pulpy anti-hero stuff. Duke Nukem is a lighter character than the world he inhabits. The entire dynamic was flipped in DNF 2011. The world was just as cartoony and stupid as Duke. He is a flippant, often needlessly destructive force in that world where everyone calls him a has-been, and he's out to bitterly prove otherwise. People are either fawning over him or being irredeemably evil. In DNF 2011, Duke Nukem is the world, but before that, he only inhabited the world, and his ass-kicking to save that darker world was relatively heroic, whereas later it felt like he was mad the aliens were breaking all his toys. I think that being king of the world was the worst thing to happen to Duke. Sometimes I like to take a holistic approach to video game analysis and the differences between this game with all its cool style and fun stuff versus the trend following 2011 version may be related to the environment in which they were both created. See, the 2011 version was started by people who watched all of this cool stuff they were passionate about making get thrown out the window. We couldn't. Our time machine was destroyed early in the alien invasion and only temporarily repaired enough to send a small group through. The restore the time machine have been kidnapped by the aliens. I will not have any more timeline shenanigans. You want to know what's after this? It just had to happen, didn't it? And it isn't a Duke Nukem sewer without octobrains. Look at him. This is really quite good for 2001. After the sewer is some more Vegas stuff, some other casinos, one of which has a volcano with an animatronic dragon in it. What are you doing in the exhaust tube? Stay right there while I shut this thing off and open the safety gate. Um, I can't seem to turn it off. Oh yeah, I just need to press the... It's pretty rough, but, you know, also cool. I think I'm supposed to lead this guard Barney Calhoun style to use this hand scanner, but he's not budging. La Vista, baby. This leads to a subway, the plantation, which has pirate ships. I mean, I guess maybe they could have at the time, and you can use the cannons, it's all very proof of concept, but like, it works and is cool. 
But then that leads to what I expect would have been a climactic point in the chapter in a boxing ring where... What? It starts waves of EDF soldiers, then just stops after two and lets you leave. What's next? The motorcycle. Now, first-person vehicles are tricky, and sometimes, who am I kidding? This thing is awesome! This thing makes Half-Life 2's buggy look like a golf cart. I save this for now because, okay, there are a lot of weapons and items in this, a lot more than we're in the finished version. And I'm using this mall level as a place to test these out because there's not a lot to talk about besides that. Your pistol, we've talked about it, it's great. It has two more ammo types, hollow points and piercing. We've got the classic Mighty Boot, the Evil Dead chainsaw that only kinda sorta works. The shotgun also has alternate ammo, acid shells, which deal continuous damage. <laughs> You ain't seen nothing yet. The assault rifle obviously has grenades. There's this laser railgun thing that lasted all the way into DNF 2011. It's fine. The pipe bomb can also be a sticky bomb with a cool little animation. We've got the RPG again, and that also has a secondary that I'll show you later. The shrinker, which... I'm just getting started. When you reload it, you put what I assume is an alien brain into it, so it's like the protector drones from Duke 3D, like we adapted their weird biological shrink powers into a gun. And that's cool as shit. Let's see what happens when we shrink Duke. Oh god, what's happening? Oh god, oh, oh. That's worse than the hive level. The freeze gun is mostly non-functional, but the flamethrower works. It lets you shoot fire, shoot gas that you can light on fire, and shoot what it calls a firewall, which is not as Rise of the Triad-like as I'd hoped, and more like a ball of napalm. Slot 5 is a bunch of vision modes, night vision, zoom, thermal, all that good stuff. Slot 6 is taken up by inventory items, which mostly work. The riot shield will auto-equip, and you can hold it up when you press use. There's also some kind of hypodermic that will inject you with steroids. And of course, the jetpack. In fact, a lot of the stuff that isn't levels or enemies, just the bare bones gunplay stuff, movement, vehicles, all that, great. Solid. It gives me faith that people will turn this into an actual game. They might say that this was all just built for the E3 demo, but man, these weapons are pretty damn satisfying to use. I'm sure they would have trimmed it down a bit, maybe lost the weird piercing rounds on the pistol that sound like a fake movie silencer. I guess the gunboat section counts as guns, so let's do it now. On your way to the Hoover Dam, instead of taking a shitty monster truck that has to stop for gas every three minutes, you do a turret section, except you're moving and you have to shoot outdoors, and it's cool, but it's still a little shitty. Looks great in a trailer 20 years ago. Okay, here we are. We're... Oh. Okay. There is very little to see after this point. Barely anything to play. It's all placeholders and ideas that are kinda roughed out. Another chance to ride the motorcycle. And a donkey. <laughs> Thrilling. This level makes me think they dug up an alien ship and moved it. Let's fast forward to something interesting. Look, it's the Prospector, the legend himself. <laughs> you think them sunglasses make you look cool or something? Hey, boy, get away from my ass. 
<laughs> you think them sun? Oh, his name was Cliff. Next to him is one of those giant worms from the 2001 trailer, but I didn't know the scripting to make it do anything fun. However, I did see some interesting story tidbits in the console when I was playing around. I missed it when it was in tiny letters at the top left of the screen, so I'd catch up when I had to no clip to get anywhere interesting, so here it is. If I were a hot babe with a bad attitude like Bombshell, where would I go in a rundown place like that? And where did that old goat Gus go? We got Bombshell involved. Pre-makeover, two-armed, blonde Bombshell. We got a lot of EDF base levels where I'm getting attacked by dogs. Alien-controlled dogs, but I still feel a little bad. They were good boys once. They only wanted to be good boys. We've got some seemingly unkillable feral pig mutants, and I've tried everything, trust me. Oh. Except, remember when I was gonna show you that alternate fire for the RPG? Because they finally gave Duke a nuke! Just like Hiroshi. Maybe you can't kill them. This is the Independence Day ship blowing up buildings level. This is the basketball court with the reflected lights that looks like it would have made an early 2000s PC explode. I don't care if Unreal had reflective surfaces, shut up. If I can't get this car fixed, neither one of us will be getting out of here. See if you can find someone to let us get inside the garage. So, okay, so this is a total recall reference. Hey, I know this classy place where you put quarters into the bed and... I gotta run, there's two invincible feral pig mutants on my tail, and if there's one beacon of safety in the universe for old Duke, it's a strip joint. What's the secret, Nuck? Shave and a haircut? Yet, what's the secret, Nuck? I didn't even put those text-to-speech voices in, they're just here, and they're so eerie. Oh, it's a cute EDF doggy, he's even got a little doggy armor, now goddammit! The dog has a dollar on him. That's good, I'm gonna need singles when I get inside. This security guard is locked in. He's doing the secret knock. I learned the secret knock and they let me into the club. I'm Duke friggin' Nukem. You'd think I'd get access to any strip club on earth, but no, not Slick Willie's open dusk till dawn. All right, he's clean. Let him in. Let him you in. You can't enter the club carrying those. Only one type of gun allowed in this place. I mean, what's the chance I'll have to do violence in the strip club? Hey, drink robot, I need some service over here. That's not what I was talking about. I didn't say stop. Hey, you look like you could help. There is some trouble in the back dressing room. Think you could check it out? Sure thing, Mr. Hawking. Uh, I'm sorry. Dr. Hawking. Oh, look at those muscles. I'll bet you could help my friend in the back dressing room. She's got a creep trying to grab her, and nobody here is man enough to do anything about it. Wait the... what? Oh, look at those muscles. I'm cocked, locked, and ready to rock, Duke. I don't like it, Duke. It's too quiet. Is this another bug hunt, sir? Is this another bug hunt, sir? Come on. Oh, thanks, sweet thing. Yes, honey, I've saved you. I've saved you from George. Here, take this pass up to the private dance area. I've got something extra special I want to do for you. After that show you just put on. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's happening again. You just sit down right here and get comfortable. I'm gonna blow you away. Duke, our experts have matched the voice of this girl to the one who called you in your penthouse. I'll remember Don't that, do Chief. anything to her right now. See where this leads. I know where it leads. It leads to sex. Even though she's dead, I, I killed her before, but no, she's, she's here. She was dead, but now she's here. Did I save her? We've got to find the president. Who stopped this guy? 
You die now. Uh, boss? I want to finish this job. I can't leave you hanging like this. Head on out to the VIP area in the back. And I'll show you some real explosive action. Hey, doesn't Dylan's girlfriend live here? He's trapped inside. Cut the power. Cut the power now. Idiot. Can't you hold your fire for a few more seconds? So, looks like we've got you now, Nukem, and we're gonna fry your ass. Fill the place with bullets and detonate the sticky bombs. Oh god, oh god, I guess this is better than the dead-eyed strip scene from the other version, but... I... I gotta get out of here. Maybe. Oh, it's happening again. There's working alien enemies here. They're... What? I was just here to see titties and save Babe. That's what I'm here for. I have to save her. She's already dead, but she's here. She's not. She's... Under attack! <laughs> what year is this? Uh, uh. A Y E E E A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A H H H exclamation point. Why is it always Twin Peaks?